Hi guys, this is Chris Appleton of Absolver, and you're listening to Angel Gareth on PRFM. Them, sat down in, of course, Club Iverbach with, we're going to be doing a bit of deer hunting, I think, with, of course, the deer hunters. Yes. Now, Chaz, I believe, you are, did you come together with this band? How did you get this band all together? As in this group of musicians, specifically? Well, as in what you've got here now. Um, well, this th- album, I've got to be honest, this album is fantastic. Thank you. So, these musicians, did you sort of have to struggle to get them, or? No, it's been really, well, I guess it has been sort of a struggle, but essentially... When I started this band in 2006, it was just a few friends of mine, and it's always kind of revolved, the door has revolved of who played with me and who who would record and who would perform. My brother's been there since the beginning, and he just, he, he's our drummer. He didn't play on one of the records. But everybody who's in the band now has sort of been a either someone I've toured with in a different band, or a friend of a friend, or my you know, somebody my brother knew from living in Rhode Island. And this has been essentially the group since 2011, except the addition, um, and this is his second tour of our piano player. But it's all been kind of random, and and really I have just had obscene luck with with meeting tremendous musicians. Now, if anyone hasn't heard the album Act Mm 4, the new album out there, of course you've got Acts 1, 2, and 3 out there. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, like I said, I was listening to Act 4 in the car, and it's uh, technically challenged, I'd say. <laughs> That's fair. I'd say very technically challenged you listen to it, because it, it's, it's a story running through. Now, yes, yes. There's so much music going on there. Mm-hmm. Have you got all the band-like sort of thing for it, or is it just the generals and most of it's done with synths and that? No, um, really, especially on this record... It was the kind of thing where I would bring the skeletons of these songs to the group. We would work it out as a group. And everything was very thoughtful, and it wasn't meticulous to the point where you stripped away any soul in the music. But it was was very thoughtful, and then I went and I arranged music for the orchestra. And then I tracked an orchestra in California. A full orchestra, a 50-piece. You stalked them. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. them coming to. Oh, that, that's got to be hard though, because I mean, you're only a youngster. Of course. And the way you look. I know. Like I said, it, it's unusual to believe that you can, you come up with something like this on the album, because it's like some big thing you'd expect from someone that's been gone for years. I think I just spend a lot of time in my head. I just, and I have the luck and the great fortune of being raised by two very uh, musical people and benefiting from the decades that they spent learning and bestowing their knowledge on me and my brother. And um, But uh, honestly, I just take it seriously, and I, uh, when I want to be creative or if I've got my sights set on something, I don't half-ass it, and I wouldn't put it out until I felt that it was right. So, was right so when I sit down and I... I mean, I don't by any chance fancy myself somebody who is a, you know, a great symphonic composer... But it's something I enjoy doing, and I want to do it well. So when it was time to arrange orchestral music, I, you know, I learn what I need to learn. The things that I don't know how to do, I'll, f- I'll learn that I don't know them, and then figure out how to do them. And I, again, I've had a really amazing luck with rubbing shoulders with people who are infinitely smarter than me, and them just kind of passing so me some information under the floating table. Floating a little bit in there. Now you said yeah. you got your brother on drums. Mm-hmm. Do you still have those arguments? Always. <laughs> Both of us do, and and we just take turns at being at fault for ridiculous things, and well, the rest easy, the right? rest of the band gets to sort of just stand back and laugh. Stand back and laugh. <laughs> if if it's good, they they laugh, and if not, they they shudder. But, they um, shudder. Now, of course, this like I said, Act Four, the new album. Mm-hmm. What made you like I say start with Act One? Was that sort of like a little? Just something you wanted to do, or...? Yes, it was. I, I had six, and still have six total acts planned. And I had a, a basic story for each record and for the entire story. But really, it was just that when I was writing the music for this, this band or for this project or whatever it was at first, 
I didn't want to write music that was just about myself and me, 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 and I, 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 and all of the things that I do. And I found that it was really comfortable for me and natural and organic to take things about myself and just fictionalize them and romanticize them in the setting of a story. So whereas I personally might be upset at a woman for a way that a relationship went, in the context of the story, on the second act, this specific woman is represented as a prostitute. Right, so just because it's easy for me to demonize somebody in that sense. But then at the same time, it provides a really wonderful therapy for me to then get a new perspective on it and eventually come to a lot of self-realization and a lot of reflection that I can see where I have been at fault and uh, you know, just elements of my life that I might not be able to gain the perspective on if I was just writing me, me, me music that was entirely unfiltered about myself. But from the beginning, there's always been a very clear idea of what I wanted to do. There just hasn't really been a timeline that I knew I wanted to do it in. Well, like I said, I looked at the photo when it came through about you guys playing cl- um, Cardiff. Now, I looked at the photo of you guys and thought, oh, God, you're going to be one of these screamy bands. Of course. Then I listened to Waves, mm-hmm. and I thought, hang on a minute. Yeah. There's something totally <laughs> wrong here. Was it the photo with us in the blue I think room? It's the, yeah, I think it was that photo See, of you guys. We don't know what to do. It. Like, this is, that was the first time we took photos since I can remember and it was kind of like well what do we do do we dress up do we dress down okay what's the most simple thing we can do everybody just wear black black will be the easiest thing and then we look at these images and it's like okay we look like we're a metal band kind of or a screamy band and then it's kind of uh, there's nothing we can really do about it at this point I think people are going to assume what they assume the hope is that it'll be the same thing that you did which is they might look at us and think like, oh God, it's going to be that kind of band. But then they go and they listen to the music and hopefully can resolve whatever the issues they have with how we look. <laughs> well, like I said, I've been listening to the album all the way through. Uh, 15 tracks on the album. Yeah, it's a long one. I was going to say, couldn't you have uh, shortened I, that down? I could have. I could have, but surprisingly, that is the shortened down version. The shortened down that version. Is the shortened, so the shortened. other one's going to be the act... Five, mm-hmm. six, and onwards. Then five so. and six will be six will be the last one. So, so you're just going to leave it at that then. I think so. What's going to be happening then after that? You are know, you going to be sat there getting bored, or you're going to be thinking, oh, I need to do something again like that, but in a different. I think what I what what seems like the most natural thing that would happen is that I will need to do something ambitious or something that challenges me because that is really what I find brings me the greatest comfort and also the greatest, uh, it's not pride, it's confidence in my work is when it's something that I've done that will challenge me and will challenge me to learn, will challenge me to push what I can do further, to try and sing better, to try and play better, to try and write better, produce better. So I don't know exactly what it'll be, but I think that once I finish six, I would probably stop entirely until the right thing going to take that short up. break. You, you working with other bands, though, to do other projects? Like, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. I've tried, but they don't do it my way. <laughs> no, it's more that I can't really do it theirs. It's less of me worrying about somebody else fitting into my frame of work and more about my inability to kind of get out of my own head and be a helpful cog in the machine. That being said, there's a few people who I have some loose plans to work with who... I trust enough and they trust me enough to sort of break down the wall of... of Getting on... Yeah, exactly. Get rid of the ego and, like, we can... People who aren't afraid to yell at me and I'm not afraid to yell at them. How has a lot of the British fans been taken to Amazing. the sound of it? Amazing. I, I mean, we've never been here. We've never been to Europe. And I don't know, maybe some people would be let down, but the fact that we could go to a place like... Glasgow, or that we could go to somewhere like London or anywhere, and that we find out there's 150 to 200 people so coming to our show. I believe this place is pretty well sold out tonight. It's if there are 10 people here, you be it's, happy. It's an amazing thing <laughs> to me. The fact that the fact that we had this is our first time here. It's essentially like being a band from the ground up all over again, a new band, and that anyone's here is like a dream come true. So. That is already a win. And there's then a few like people it. outside now. You really? Know that, don't know. There's about I didn't. four. That, there's a, a bit that's more a than that, actually. That's good. Oh, there's a dog as well. I hope the dog can come in, because I miss my dogs. So, <laughs> so that's the thing you miss on tour, is the, the animals. I would say, I mean, definitely the first thing is the girlfriends. 
You're the, the only wives. one that's ever said that. Really? Yeah. Everyone's going, oh, I miss me dogs. <laughs> no, I mean, I have, I mean, I definitely have oh. an affinity for my dogs, but, uh, but I would be lying if I said if I didn't say that I miss my girlfriend first. But my dogs are like children. I don't have children yet. The dogs are absolutely like every day looking at pictures of them on my phone, just being sent pictures of them playing in a park and thinking, why am I not there? But you got to ruin a living. It, yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know if we technically are right now, but it's less about I think earning a living, and I think it's more about not. The percentage of people who get the opportunities that we get are zero. And the fact that we could be given this opportunity and look at it and think it's not a living, so we're not going to do it, it would be spitting in the face of everyone who's ever tried and failed. Now, the albums one, two, three, and of course the new one, four, where people get hold of them if they want to get hold of them? Well, I think for the first time, like from release day on, I think Act Four is available in Europe and the UK through Rude Records. And I mean, it's also available on iTunes and Amazon and all of those digital Usual places. Yeah, but I think vinyl and CD is available through Rude Records. And then um, I'm sure there's ways to sort of order it by mail online, but I think this is the first time we actually have from like release day. European distribution, which so you, is you crazy. have copies with you on the tour now. Well, funny thing is that we had copies with us, but we left we left our boxes of CDs in Brighton, and tonight was technically the first night we could sell them. So <laughs> <laughs> great, yeah, first night in exactly. the world, we can't sell. Them. I know, I know. <laughs> so um, we're getting a, bo- a box of them tomorrow, but we just just before this we found out we left them. No, you know what will happen now, don't you? You'll be at the next place to play, and they'll turn up here and come. Yeah, and they'll show up. And then you'll move on, and they'll turn up there <laughs> wherever you play next. We can only hope things go that way. Well. What about Europe? I've got to be honest now. Places like France, Belgium, Germany, Spain. How do they take to a band like yourself? Well, so far, we have only played in Italy. Austria, Germany, Belgium. I want to say that's it so far, other than playing in the UK. But it's been amazing. I mean, again, it's the kind of thing where even if there were 10 people, we'd be floored. But there's hundreds of people coming out, and they're singing along. They're having a good time, and they're coming up to us after the show and telling us that it was worth the wait. And uh, I don't know, that feels like it's been a missed opportunity for almost a decade now. So... And so it's just making up for lost time. And so we do this. It's amazing. The first thing I want to do is get back as soon as we can so it's not another decade before, you know, people wait and get bored and then just Because, of course, on. this is only a short tour of the UK at the moment. Isn't Very it? short. Very short. Yeah. I think you've got another four dates. Mm-hmm. Well, four, t- dates? four dates including a fest. Wait, no, maybe you're right. What day is today? The first? Yep. We have... First, second, third, fourth, fifth. So we have uh, the four more dates after tonight, including a festival in, I want to say, Maastricht in, in the Netherlands. Well, so you're off over abroad to a festival over there. Yeah, we have, we have three more shows after tonight in the UK. The last one is in London, and then we play in, in uh, the Netherlands and fly home. And then we have three days, then we do a full US tour. So you've got a nice big stage to finish off on. Yeah. To pretend like we're a huge band. To pretend. Yeah. Because, I mean, the stage in Club Ivor upstairs is a, it's a quite a nice size stage. You know what's funny, though, is it's one of the biggest stages we've been on while we've it's, been here. It's one of the biggest so far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I hear tomorrow um, is going to be very small. So how many of them are in the band now at the moment, then? Six, including me. So cool. Small stage is going to be a nice tight squeeze, then. Yes. Yes. We, we do a fair amount of tetrising our equipment around the stage to figure... Who goes where and what goes where, but, but uh, you know, I mean, it's it's a pain in the moment, but it's nothing that we haven't dealt with before. And again, like, it would be finding the absolute most worthless thing to complain about. It's just funny because you turn and you hit someone in the head in your band, and you move I'm afraid the wrong way. You don't knock them out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we haven't done that yet. Yet. Yeah. Say not. Uh, <laughs> what about UK festivals? Are you looking forward to getting to, onto some of them for We've next been trying. Year? We've been trying. I would love to get on. Uh, so actually, the, end of the year's coming now. I think December's the last one, uh, just down the road from here, actually, in Porthcoll. 
But I mean, next year we got all the other big yeah. festivals coming up. We would love to. I, I, we, we spent the day off actually in Liverpool, and just found out about that festival there, the four-day festival, the Liverpool International Music Festival. Ah, oh, a big free one that apparently four days, three hundred thousand people came through it. But it seems like there are just endless festivals here, and we weren't able to get on any. But the hope is that we've convinced some people or the powers that be by doing this that maybe there's potential for us to come back and hopefully we can get, you know, on whatever small stage at whatever festival. So then get out there and get it. Now, mm-hmm. web page for yourself. Web page? Well, for the band. It's uh, the Deer Hunter, D E A R Hunter. At, uh, or it's just the deerhunter.com. I was going to say at com. I don't know what that would have meant. Uh, yeah, no, it's the way you spoke. Your deer is totally different yeah. to the other deer. Yes. It's, so. It really is as ridiculous as it sounds. It's just ingrained in the sort of story of the band and this this heartfelt ignorant character traveling through his life just reactionary with no real refined world view that's, that's really where it. the character the mm-hmm. full the acts are all coming from and one thing that's actually really funny you know what is it pretty things yeah so what is that sf sorrow oh god knows is that uh, that you know that record well, I had never heard of them, and I was doing this, this uh, not this record, this was a few years back, and we had done all of these records, and I had written this story, and then somebody showed me that record, and it was striking how similar th- their character was, uh, or is, I mean, obviously, decades and decades before I was born. Yeah, well, before but, you were born, what was that, the 60s? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, so it's, this, it's basically just this story about a character who doesn't know anything, and throw him through the ringer of life, and see what kind of opportunities it presents for some up with yeah so like i said it's such a complicated album <laughs> um technically minded like like you said you got an orchestra in there mm-hmm. on the album now you went out and got an orchestra did you go and talk to him yourself no well what, what happened say, if you walk up it was to an totally orchestra random and go no. hey guys do you fancy being on my album they would have looked at you and gone yeah right okay yeah, yeah. mate <laughs> they, so what happened was i i actually Surprisingly, again, by looking at me, but a few years back, I, I composed a symphony, and I was able to record it with the uh, Brno Philharmonic or Symphony Orchestra in Brno in the Czech Republic, and I put that out, and this orchestra in San- in in Berkeley, California, contacted me. The conductor of this orchestra called their the name of the orchestra is Awesome Orchestra. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And it's basically a a nonprofit organization that's a community of about 2,500 different musicians that are all orchestral musicians. It's like a modular orchestra that changes who the lineup is depending on what they're trying to do. But the whole I, the whole idea is seeking out new and exciting, adventurous things for an orchestra to do that isn't stale, just pay, playing 400 year old music. To peop- so they looked for these things to do. They reached out to me and asked me for sheet music to one of the movements for my symphony. And I being, you know, the overbearing person that I am in that first conversation just said, would you record on my next record? Oh, so you thought, you it want was my right sheet away. music, it come was, and play yeah, on my record then. Yeah, and luckily the, the conductor was a fan of the group. Yeah, I was going to say, because how would they have got to hear about you unless one of them had no, listened to it and gone, that's exactly wait how. a minute. The sheer luck of it. And then we hit it off, and uh, they were able to they were able to make it work. And actually, it was through the funding of a friend whose name is Kevin Pereira, um, a really good friend. He was the one who funded the whole thing, the addition of the orchestra. Um, so honestly, again, like I can't stress enough how just lucky I am. I have all of these ideas that I'm sure a lot of people have had before, and just haven't had the fortune that I've had, but all the stars aligned and then it's just oh now you're recording this new album with an orchestra so the first two well the first three albums did you have an orchestra mixed in with that or a little it was more like I would find a violinist or a violist just stick something some tracks and then you know in between the whatever I could actually get I would put in some synths and things like that now as I said you said they asked for sheet music right so that means they they want to do a cover version yeah, essentially they wanted to, they did this thing where um, they have live readings of music um, for free that you can attend in Berkeley. You can find them. They have, they rent out this really cool art space. You go there, they have free beer. They play, they just play, you know, they have like a theme 
it's I think it's one Sunday every month or every six weeks or something like that. They have a theme. They'll do these live readings of music that nobody in the orchestra might have heard or heard of. And uh, you can just go and attend it and watch them do it. It's open to the public. And they wanted to try that. And so I was actually able to attend it as well. It was a lot of fun. But it's just, it's wild. Now, you're saying themes there. They do that. Mm -hmm. Now, a video for some of the tracks of the album. Are you looking at doing, like, dressing up for this sort of medieval you know, period drama? If, if there was a budget, if there was actually a budget to do a more theme or connected video properly, I would say 100%. But I know that... You just want to get out there in those fancy clothes yeah. and dressed up. <laughs> but I know that given the actual, you know, status of the band, the size of the band, the scope of the band, that we, at best, we would pull off something incredibly cheesy and under budget. So I'd rather just, I'd rather just have something that, for whatever budgets we have or whatever reach we do have or who we get to work with, that it's the best version of whatever it can be rather than in every aspect interjecting this plot or this story or concept into every medium because again i think that without the right budget it would be hilariously bad it would be it would be bad it'd be bad now on stage you don't dress up no. you just come on as yourselves and you just come out with this <coughs> like I said is very technical sound very orchestral very metalish yep but it's not like I, like I like I said. Is I was expecting a screamy band, something, or something with a bit of music, but you can still hear the vocals. Right. And then, like I said, it's listening to Act Four, and it was like, wow. Totally wasn't what I was expecting from the from the from you guys. Like I said, is mm -hmm. all that. Um, it is something like I said. Is someone's got to get, go get it from their web page, get it from Rude Records, right, and listen to it. Go and buy it. These guys need the money anyway. We do. Um, but it is one of those albums that is a fantastic album to listen to. It's, like I said, very complicated, and it tells a story. Mm -hmm. And now I'm into Act 4, I need to get Act 1, 2, and yes, 3. Yes, yes. Just to catch up now. That's the... It's not fair, see. That's the goal. I got brought into it on Act 4. That's not on. <laughs> that is not on, see. I need Act 1, 2, and 3 now. Yes. So I'm going to have to get in contact with Rude Records and tell them to Please send do. me do. through promos of it now to yeah. have a listen to it. Because, I mean, it's a fantastic track. Now, what track of the album would you like to be played? Uh, from the new record, I would say... There's a song called Is There Anybody Here that I really like. Maybe selfishly because I have a guitar solo in it. <laughs> um, there's that song. There's also... Oh, I'm trying to think of really what would be the one. Or no, I like that one. I like Is There Anybody Here. Nobody's really been playing that one, or we haven't really done much with that track, so I like that one. So that's going to be your choice, is, yeah. uh, is there that one there. Is There Anybody Here? Yeah. From, of course, Chaz from The Deer Hunter. That's D-E-A-R. Yep. Hunter, uh, dot com. Yes. You can find them on that page. There's, I suppose there's info there to your Facebook or your other web pages. Yep. And we're on YouTube, Spotify and Spotify iTunes and, and all iTunes. of those things. So people can find you a lot there. Yes. Now I'm looking forward to catching you guys on stage at 10, 9 30 till 10 30. You've also got The People, The Poet. Yes. Unusual name. And um, Black Foxes. Are yes. they local ish? Um, I think The People, The Poet are local ish. I think, I think they're from Wales and I think. This is the first night with Black Foxes. I don't know their sound very well. Um, I'm excited to see them. I think they're on a few shows with us starting tonight, and I think this is actually the People the Poets' last show with us. They did four starting in Nottingham. Um, but they're good. I mean, they're, they're, they're a great cool. band. They're a great Go check band. them out. Yeah. But, of course, your favorite track is that one. I'm also yeah. going to be playing The, the Waves, because that was a fantastic track. Awesome. I've got to be honest, I like that one. And there's a YouTube video for that one. Yes, sir. People go check out. Chad, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. Um, catch you on stage later on, man. I'm awesome. Good. Thank and you. Enjoy the rest of the tour. Thank you. Cheers, man. Hi, guys. This is Chris Appleton of Absolver, and you're listening to Angel Gareth on the RFM. <laughs>